I'm Christopher Lloyd, and I'm standing here at the studios of Sirius XM Satellite Radio. It's a weekly morning, approximately 6 a.m., and this is the OP and Anthony Show. Never before has one radio show been so extreme. So vulgar. I'll fucking shove my face up a chick's ass in a second. Someone said we curse a lot, do we? I have no idea if we do. So flatulent. Who just farted? I did, but I didn't know it started. Like rotten eggs and sewage. Oh, wow, thank you. I can't believe that us sitting around like this is actually a radio show. This is not going to get any better than this. Are we on the air? Oh, we are? Oh, okay. Quite simply, the greatest show in the history of broadcasting. Oh, and every day, that's what I say. You guys having a good time or what? are destroyed and conventions burn to the ground. Would you like to make a fucking With Opie, the destroyer. I would eat Betty White's ass. She's 90, right? Oh, it doesn't smell too bad. Anthony, the rage. Holy fuck, how much more fair you wanted? Tired of these people. Up my ass all the time trying to get me to help. Fuck you. And Jim Norton. Lover of the transgender. Every time a transsexual walks in the room, party horn should go off. Like, Surprise! Anthony show. Strap in, dicks. This one's gonna hurt. Double guns, bitch. But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. All right. Good morning, everyone. Hola. We were just uh, discussing the Fez thing before oh the fucking god. show. Oh my god. A lot of different opinions in this room. You know, I I I, I speak from a place where this this. Sounds way too familiar. <laughs> this me, 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 narcissism. Oh my god, I'm heated up. Heated the fuck up. No, you, I think we're all on the same page here. If you didn't, if you didn't hear it, uh, Ron and Fez had an amazing radio show yesterday because Ronnie, uh, Ronnie's showing that he's kind of, kind of had it. Oh yeah, with the situation at hand, which is. That he does a radio show with a guy that doesn't really speak anymore, which is and and Ronnie is the one. Sitcom-ish. <laughs> Ronnie is the one that is uh, uh, sitting there, and you know he's the one that's not sure what he wants to do with his future in radio. Right. And some of the options that are milling around in his head is to fucking just walk away. It's either walk away or uh, just uh, uh, reinvent himself. He wants to, I think, take a ship. Down to the Panama Canal, yeah, and just be uh, work on a ship. And then, and then, and then you got Fezzi like begging and pleading not not to do oh what, what's going to be done. And oh Ronnie's boy. sitting there like, there's there's nothing that has been decided. And Ronnie's so fucking faithful to Fez, way more faithful than I would ever be with anyone in my entire life. By the way, is more than willing to bring Fez along to whatever the fuck the the Ron and Fez uh, show becomes. Yeah. So it was it was sort of sad when Fez cried at first, and then I was sitting there going, "Enough already!" Because that's going to affect what Ronnie's thinking. It was I was saying it was sad in a movie way, like when somebody says something like that, right? Because uh, he was literally weeping, begging uh, Ronnie not to change anything with the show, right? And uh, but it, he thinks that the people down the hall are making those decisions, right? And Ronnie. I don't know how many times he could tell Fez is is telling Fez no. This is all me, right? I don't know what the fuck to do anymore because he's he's really frustrated. He said it in in that hour yesterday where he doesn't want to come in uh, day after day and think the whole world there's something wrong with the entire world. Yeah, he, likes, he wants to just have fun. He wants it. to do like pot talk, like he like he did growing up, where yeah, he wants yeah. to just shoot the shit and have fun every day. I think Fez knew more than he lets on that it was Ron. I think deep down, like the idea of saying, hey, look, it's almost like they're both talking about the same thing, right. but using down the hall. And mm. I don't think he's lying, mm. but I think they're both using down the hall to avoid going, look, I know well, you. Uh, I well, think it's an easy. Face to face, like, yeah, hey, I, I think problem, deep down he knows. But the problem is, Fez doesn't listen to anybody, anybody, mm. including the guy that has had his back for. I don't know how long have they been doing it? Twenty years as yeah, well. Yeah, a long time. Holy fuck! And then him, him crying like that. 
as a human being, of course it affects you, but it also gets in your fucking brain. And I, I hope whatever Ronnie's thinking, he stays strong. And I love Fez. I do love Fez. And I, 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 I saw Ron and Fez do amazing radio over the years, amazing shit. Oh, yeah. But the fact is, Fez has tapped out. And he needs to do something. He needs to get real help for himself. He needs to walk away from radio for a little while. I don't know what the fuck. Maybe that's the answer. I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. I'm no shrink. But Ronnie's not going to, like, you know, throw him out the fucking window. Ronnie like, has never been that guy. I liked uh, the Ron and Fez lawn care service. That sounded like a good idea. Right, right. Yeah, Ronnie basically said, if I told Fez I'm going to have a lawn uh, care service, you know, Fez is that loyal, he would do it tomorrow and just it give up radio. Because it, uh, it's not the radio part of it, it's the Ron and Fez part but of it. That you think he loves Ron? <laughs> I think he does. You think that's true? I think he well, does. Ron, like, Ron yeah. ended the show yesterday saying that Fez gave him some kind of Christmas present that he, he can't even tell the listeners what it is because it's so... I, I, what? I, how do you explain it? It's so he wanted. Uh, I don't know how he, but it, not embarrassing. But like he didn't know how to handle this present. I guess that Fez gave him personal to, to the okay. point that Ronnie doesn't even want to mention what it is to wow. anybody, including the people close to him. But Fe, I mean, Fez, Jesus Christ! You don't, you don't fucking listen to anybody, you know, including the people that got your back. The yeah. show is not the same. No. And it's I, finally gotten to Ron. Yeah, a lot of And it of, has nothing people, to do with the company. A lot of people were calling in, talking about how they used to listen and right. why they used to listen, how funny the, this was and that. And, uh, yeah, and then, and then Fez would say something like, well, you know, make it sound like it, that just happened, you know. Yesterday or a week ago, right. everything was fine up until then. Right. It's like, no, this has been and, years. And then Ron is basically giving him a laundry list of things he doesn't do on the radio show anymore. Right, right. And Fezzy just sits there, I guess, just staring at Ron. I don't oh. know. I mean, he could help himself. If he still has it in him, he, he could help himself by going back uh, and doing some of the stuff that the Ron and Fez audience loves from the guy. Yeah. It, it all started uh, because they were discussing a um, steak dinner they had with Tim Sabian at the Friars Club. And Ronnie and, and Chris, I'll use his real name today, and I do know the guy. We just fuck around with all that shit. Who didn't know that? Uh, they were talking about how much fun it was. Yeah. And then Tim Sabian goes, I, 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 I like you. And Ronnie swears it meant, I like you, meaning you guys. Oh, boy. And Fezzy's like, no, he was just talking about you. <laughs> and Ronnie's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then Fez said I, he couldn't eat his steak uh, dinner because he sees the writing on the wall. And well, he also didn't like the spices. It was spices. And the spices. <laughs> it had spices. <laughs> he ordered some kind of Cajun steak or something. Yeah. And Ronnie had a great line. He's like, what is this, 1989? What a tragic comedy it was listening. Right. And then, I had to listen to the whole show, and, and it was just tragic but, and hilariously funny at the same time. Well, Ronnie's like, what are you talking about? We had a really nice meeting with Tim Sabian. Yeah. There's enough, there's enough room for everybody is what he's saying. Because Ronnie hinted maybe they should do some um, some separate radio and then maybe some radio together. Yeah. Like there's, like there's opportunities for everybody. A lot of options out there, he says. <sighs> Christ. And then, uh... and then I, you know, to make it about myself, I, I lived that life for many, many fucking years with my mom, you know. Where you have a real fucking issue, a real problem, and then that person is getting so fucking emotional in your face that you have to tap out and go, all right, doesn't doesn't matter what problem I have anymore. <laughs> Fuck. It was frustrating to listen to. Was it? Because Ronnie, it like, you know, really cares for Fez and, ha and, and always has had his back. Yeah. You, and then, what, Fez hates cookies or something? What's that oh, about? Oh, no. Cookies makes him cry? Oops. That mm -hmm. was, uh... That's his cat thing. Huh? He brought in his... He once said that his cat could say cookie. Right. When prompted. Oh, oh, oh right, 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 right. And so they brought his cat in to say it. it and they did. spent over two and a half hours <laughs> never said, on the air right. with he Fez which is great whispering radio. cookie to his cat and his he cat not said, ever saying so, anything. His no. cat didn't say cookie? Oh, no. Never so, said. But over two and a half hours. <laughs> but that's a great bit. I Very heard most funny. of that show is awesome. It was amazing. Oh, it was Fuck <laughs> yeah. And Fez amazing. would come up with all sorts of stuff over the years. And and people were asking me, is this a work? I, 
Uh, I've heard a it lot. It would of be work the greatest years. work in the history of mankind. I'm a hundred percent making. A hundred percent sure there's there's no work here whatsoever. Okay, hundred percent. Years in the making, if it's a work. It would no, be amazing. Fez had a, you know, he was closeted, I guess, for a long time, and that's probably frustrating. But he came out, yeah, and everybody accepts him. Right. Like, yeah. that's, like Fez, if you listen, that's a big thing. Like, right. this quote-unquote homophobic audience or this male demo, right. nobody cared. Like, meaning, meaning that they liked this guy, yeah, yeah. and it didn't affect them liking him. And I think that he got so much acceptance, and he still saw a lot of people. He, he found some negativity, but it's like, dude. Maybe he can't accept uh, happiness or something, because maybe yeah. he was happier when he was in the closet, period. <clears throat> Unless his mental issues, whatever they are, I don't even know, have gotten worse. I don't think anybody really knows. I don't think but he knows. I felt way more uh, badly for Ron Bennington yesterday than Fez when I was listening to that hour. Because, you know, Ronnie's at some kind of crossroads in his uh, in his uh, career. You yeah. know, he's been he's been beaten down a long fucking time. <laughs> he tries to start conversations and bits. And then there's a guy just staring at him. Well, you know, we've made oh we God. joke about it on the show because you got to try to find some some humor out of this shit. Right. But that wore him out. So now Ronnie's, Ronnie's thinking, okay, I got to figure out something new here. And that doesn't mean fucking throwing Fez out the window. But And as many times as he's going to tell uh, Fez that, Fez doesn't hear it. Mm -mm. No. Listening to it, you could hear, like, Ron would say certain things and Fez was hearing something else. It was like he was going, yeah, but that was this or that. And, and you could he, yes. it's like, dude, you're not hearing what That's Ron's what mental patients you. do. Yeah. They never Ron. hear you. Oh, I know. No, Ron started, you know, raising his voice and cursing a little bit. It was, uh, oh, good for him, you know, amazing. Good for him. Yeah. Fuck. It was just, it just hit too close to home with bullshit I've had to deal with over the years, which I'm, you know, way mm. past. Thank God. Thank the fuck God. God. What and do you I, got? What part you got? There was some. There was some great uh, uh, moments where. <laughs> The, the analogies would come out and the um the like cliche kind of sayings that were fez would say that were all wrong like right. put a bullet in his pocket right uh, <laughs> ronnie, how many bullets in your pocket and, or, then, <laughs> and then there'd just be silence and ronnie would just come back with that isn't even a saying dude I, there was so it many was moments so of silence fun. yes i looked at youtube i thought my the, the player yes. hadn't cleared right. up but i'm like <laughs> that I heard, all right <laughs> all right i don't even know what the fuck you're talking about <laughs> And then, uh, I don't know, and then, uh, you know, Ronnie did our show recently, and then, like, Fez had some kind of weird problem with that when Ronnie went in and did his regular show. It was yeah. more than but, a problem. I mean, he was... But, like, Ronnie couldn't even enjoy the fact that he just did radio with us. Fez cried the whole show on Why? the Friday that Ron right. did this show. Cause um, because he, he did our show! So why does Fez come on the show? Like I, I don't want Fez on the show. I'm saying he didn't even try to come in. But like, I don't want he... him on the show. Sorry, Jimmy. Well, it was more than Sorry. that, though, because Fez said on the air that he was convinced that during commercial breaks and after the show that we here were telling Ron to leave Fez. Yeah, there was that. We have never, and I mean never, had that conversation. No, I mean, that Ron... one email exchange, but right. aside from that. <laughs> Ron made it clear that not only had that advice not come from you guys, but... He said, in all the years of knowing Opie and Anthony, I don't think they've ever given me any advice. Yeah, yeah. I have small Just talk. Friends. I have small talk with Ron when the mics are off, but we've never had a deep conversation with, about yeah. that. And then he's got a comic coming in, and it's, Fez is convinced. Oh, Tom that, Rhodes, yeah. Tom Rhodes, he's convinced that, like, I guess he's there to replace him. I feel bad yeah. in a way that Fez is going through some of his mental shit, but oh my God. I hope Ron's, uh, you know, stays strong. I really do. I hope he stays strong uh, with whatever he's thinking, which has nothing to do with us or the company, period. Period. Yeah, you, it sounds a little paranoid, like thinking that. Yeah, and it's, it's almost like I wish definitely. I could shake Fez and go like, dude, I know you, you mean what you're saying. Like, he means it, but it's not what's happening. But it's not what's happening. And yeah, it's yeah. hard when you're so convinced that something is what it is to, to, to all yeah. of a sudden be shaken out of that reality right. and to know like, oh, my God, uh, I'm seeing yeah, all this these people aren't after you. But They're really so, not. It's yeah. your own perception. I don't know how you break through that because there's a lot of mental people out there that just hear it their way. Um, and can't listen whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look, the phones are lit with people that deal with someone like that. I have to deal with a Fez type every day, and it's frustrating. Well, turn the radio off. No problem. <laughs> <laughs>
He thinks Fez loves Ronnie. Yeah, I that think, was that one might, of the things guess... that were going around. You know, one of the theories that were going around. You know, they've they've been together as a a radio show for many years, and then you know, Fez is a kind of a needful guy, and more than in a paternal way, you're saying. Yeah, I would love to know what the Christmas present was. Oh, yeah. So do you think I would love to know in that in a relationship like that a friendship like that where it's uh, one maybe is more of a mentor and then they become a radio uh -huh. partners if he loves Ron and it's not that oh he wants to jerk Ron off right, it's not right. about that I don't think that's it's it it's not about that but say he loves is it like maybe he's gotten really quiet like he's secretly pissed at Ron for something like you know how when you're in a relationship mm -hmm. you some something shuts you down with the girl or whatever for a week or two weeks or whatever the fuck it is is it one of these things where all, all of a sudden you realize you're pissed off at the person you're dating. And I think his mind is like a fucking one of those lotto ball machines just popping around like to, constantly. I don't think he could like think for a second to even think of a response to something, a funny line. It's that, I think I, his mind is racing constantly. I, I think I think mentally ill people are, you know, very aware in their narcissistic ways. And I believe that he's aware that Ronnie's not playing his his game anymore. That he's losing Ronnie, as far as that shit goes. And if you think about it, you know, the the capacity they've been together. Like you, uh, Jimmy said, I don't think there's a, a sexual thing yes. that he wants to Ron, but there's a, a relationship there that I think Fez sees in a different way than Ron does. And in a different way, you know, because he's gay, I think he sees that type of relationship in a different way again not sexual and maybe he knows it's an but, impossible thing too like yeah, yeah when you yeah. know you're working with someone if he feels that way right you're working with somebody that you have this different feeling for yeah and you know that you're at the, the point as far as you'll ever go with it maybe right. that's a frustrating crazy I don't, that's I don't know. why we all keep it to just hand jobs absolutely <laughs> you know occasionally we'll catch sam dipping down there to try to get a fucking th <laughs> what we call the three helmet lick <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, if we're being blunt, blunt and honest today, you know, Fez is lucky that he's here at Sirius XM because the company doesn't really care about our show and Ron and Fez's show. They don't they don't look at it in a bad way or a good way. No, we're just no. here. They're a big picture kind of a company. We're just here. <laughs> yeah. And if we weren't motivated, boy, could we call this in every day. And if, if Fez was on regular radio with Ron, he would have been gone at oh, least yeah. a year ago. They yeah, would have yeah. put up with it. Yep. You got the audio cue to Fez worrying about being replaced. Yeah, well, I got and Ron losing it. Yeah, I figure we'll want to get to the meat of this shit. Yeah, and we also had the live read that yeah. came after all. This. Oh, the the Mrs. But that's just because he, read. Holy shit! That's just because he doesn't. You know, cookies makes <laughs> makes him cry. And See, that, I, I I love Ron and Fez, but I don't listen because by the time they're on, um, we're off the air, and I would go home and go to sleep. So uh -huh. listening to that yesterday, like knowing the dynamics just from being here was interesting because I get I haven't listened to a huge hunk of the show mm -hmm. and to hear that happening well oh, wow. I know. Yeah. what's interesting and it goes to Jim's point about not knowing really what's going on on the show the whole thing started because Fez was upset that somebody called Jim's advice show right yeah using the name Todd and right giving out all of Fez's problems but Jim didn't even know they were Fez's I didn't, problems. Right, right. Could, right. and he was perplexed by the way trying to help this the guy, guy. <laughs> the guy called him my advice show and he was saying something like I'm Todd we get that call we should have got that call yeah maybe we should get that uh, uh -huh. and uh, Erocks Erock let me know that he was uh, oh, bullshitting a whatever. Gag. But it was yeah. interesting. I forget what the guy said. But, his father hosed him off or some shit. Oh, yeah, like, oh, out in no. the yard. But here's, oh, boy. here's the problem with that. Oh, boy. So I heard it loud and clear. Fez thinks it's an inside job. Oh, yeah. Fez thought that whole thing was an inside job. That somebody actually called up. The who, devious who, Sam Roberts probably put it together. <laughs> yeah. But Fez <laughs> thinks that, you know, it's an inside job, meaning someone that most likely works close to either, uh, either us or Ron and Fez. Right. Even though it's pretty obvious that the guy just listens enough to the Ron Fez show where he picked up on oh, all the yeah. things we he needed, have... needed to. I have the, I have the hey, clip from uh, Jim's show if you want it. Wow. Oh. A little bit until I get bored and then... Yeah, but you don't want to... 
Oh, what well, Sam, your yeah. lies are overwhelming. We have uh, Todd in New York has oh. severe anxiety. You know, it's funny, Todd. I go through the bouts of this myself, which makes it hard Jim's for me to try to help. How are you? <laughs> yes. It's so I'm funny doing, listening to Jim trying yeah, to help I this guy. I have a business partnership, and lately I've just been showing up to work, and I don't pull my side. Yeah, oh, my name. Oh, oh, I would have known. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, no, uh, no, just because of the, the sure. Just because the Todd in New York. I got a partner. You know, I didn't even know Fez's his name was Todd. Oh, okay. I swear, uh, I didn't know Fezzi's name was Todd until yesterday. <laughs> it's easy to say that now, but knowing what we know, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think I might have picked up Dude, on Dude, when this I one. see the phone screens, though, and I see one guy, like, drinking, kind of want to kill myself. And then this guy, with that, it, it, this wasn't so outlandish. Uh -huh. right? Him saying that he didn't pull his share in the, his side in the yeah, partnership. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, right, it happens. Yeah, there's some damaged people listening to this oh, th There's channel. nothing but fucking creeps call my show. This guy was, like, the healthiest. <laughs> I have a, uh, a business partnership, and lately I've just been showing up to work, and I don't pull my side, yet my name's still on the business. Okay. And my business partner's been getting really upset with me. Sure. What are you anxious about? Anything in particular? Um, Everything. My sexuality, my mother. <laughs> okay, well, those are big things. Uh, so what, are you straight, and you think you might oh, be bisexual Jimmy, or gay? He's trying to help. Um, I think I'm asexual, but what? I think I'm gay. Okay, wait a minute. So, asexual, <laughs> you're concerned because you don't get the urge to have sex very often? Oh, gosh. Right. Were you abused sexually? Um, not really. My father did hose my ass out in the driveway once. <laughs> what do you mean he hosed? <laughs> this guy knows all the details. He knows right. all the little bits that have come out over the years. Your ass out with a real hose? Yeah. Now, why the driveway? That's kind of publicly humiliating, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. So, what was the motive of that? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. My father recently died, and I think he might have been a closet homosexual, perhaps a pedophile. I'm not sure. Jesus. Wow. Oh, is this fake? Are you joking? That was Iraq indicated. Oh, and there he oh, goes. Right. There he Thanks, goes. Thanks, Iraq. That's what uh, got. Yeah. I was annoyed the guy hung up instead of saying yeah, because Iraq, I think, was making the thing like. I, I kept going, no, it's fake, it's fake. And then finally, I'm, oh. when he said hose my ass on the driveway, I was like, Jim, it's a fake. Jimmy, oh. thought, he was, you thought, Jimmy thought you were saying, I want a steak, I want a steak. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it went on longer. I go for a steak. <laughs> yeah, I would love, love this steak. As long as it's not too spicy. Yeah, but then like hose in the driveway, like what a fucking <laughs> spice is But that was the, uh, yeah. that, that was one of the triggers that. Led to what happened yesterday oh, around a fest. By the way, I don't like that the one clip of my show we play on this show, it has to be me going right to molestation. Yes, but That yes. was a fair question. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's uh, Ron Fez from yesterday. This is where it starts getting uh, very good. What does that mean? I, it does, I don't know what it means. No, sorry. What? Oh, we should yet. find out what they're... Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the, please, Sam, it's... find out before you get there's that kissed. There's that dead air and then the... The so, Bennington sigh. <laughs> Luke, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, Fez, I won your fat, ratty old shirt about three weeks ago. I was just wondering if you want me to send that back. I'm just sitting in the packaging, and it, uh, I was like, you might miss it a little bit. No, keep it. It's an old uh, Fez shirt. Probably won't need it. What does that mean? <laughs> I it does. I don't know what it means. Then when you do, know, I don't know what any of this means. Well, when you do know, this would be a, a time to have a conversation. But to come into some place and are you asking anything specifically? No, you're not. You're just saying you don't know what things are. How could you not know what things are when you sat there and had the dinner? Um, lady trucker. Oh, no. Yes, uh, Susie, what are these changes that you think are going on? <laughs> Not your fucking business. <laughs> you know, I don't want to put ideas in people's head, and it's really none of your business. Oh, well, no. <laughs> then I wouldn't bring it up on the fucking show, <laughs> Les, if it's none of her business. <laughs> I, I don't know what the changes are. I know Tommy Rhodes is coming in here tomorrow. Oh, no. I don't know what that's about. Why is all of a sudden, I didn't see his name on a booking sheet or anything. I don't know why Tommy Rhodes is all of a sudden coming in here. Tommy Rhodes is one of the best fucking comedians on the planet Earth. <laughs> he's an old friend of mine. He's an old friend of ours. And he's stopping by tomorrow. It just seems weirdly oh. coincidental. 
In what way? Because I don't know what's going on with me in this company. Yes, you do. I was expecting to hear last night. And, and, and the, the, the Russians are trying to take over, and the colonel left the messages in the Dropbox, but I have to do the mathematics. <laughs> What's that from? Beautiful Mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <It's>, this <laughs> is like... Yeah. <laughs> Go to Fez's house, and there's just fucking magazines well, and newspapers stuck to the wall with threads connecting words. Supposedly no one's allowed in Fez's house anymore. Maybe. Uh-oh. He, uh, he, they said he yeah. announced that on the radio, I think. Yeah, a couple days ago, they said Fez stopped cleaning his house, so he doesn't I'm let Getting new radio there. transmissions from the military. <laughs> Did he stop cleaning his house? That's what they oh, said on the show. Oh, boy. It seems weirdly coincidental. In what way? Because I don't know what's going on with me in this company. Yes, you do. <laughs> I was expecting to hear last night at the going away party. Going away party. Jesus. <laughs> um, he's I'm perplexed. Break. Right back, right a fist. <laughs> right there, he's just exasperated. And incidentally, oh, it's just, it's just, here's the important part that no one's picking up on. Right. How about fuck out Tim Sabian takes this show out for a nice steak dinner at the Friars Club? I was thinking the same thing. Tim, how about that? A bunch <laughs> of steaks for the boys. I was thinking the same thing. We, we're in his fucking little shitty office down the hall every fucking meeting. And they're living it up at the Friars Club with this spicy laughing, steak. Laughing, laughing yeah. their asses. Laughing, yeah. talking to Jerry Stiller. Jerry Stiller right. having their spicy steaks. Most of them were laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one guy one not wasn't. happy. We're yeah. sitting here in this fucking hovel. A hovel. <laughs> one, I live in a hovel. One guy couldn't read the room. <laughs> Holy shit! You want to continue with this? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yes. All right. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask Fez if if he feels that he's being selfish, that he would get mad that everybody around him wants to change things because nothing has changed with him, and they just want to move on and. You know, you're getting mad at Ron and these guys. I don't understand it because it's you that's that's you know has to make a change for everyone else to feel happy. Do you want them to just sit and be sad all day while they have to do their job? They want to be happy too, you know. I don't think it's selfish to just want to know what's going on in your own place of business. Can you pause that real quick? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That was not in even. that in that moment <clears throat> is probably what's the most frustrating. It's like that guy asked a legit question, right? Yeah, and it's like, I Fez. He does, he's, it is selfish not to be. You're a fresh writer. To be concerned about what's going on in your place of business is not. But selfish. that wasn't the point the guy not, was making, and that's not what's happening. <clears throat> that's what he heard. Well, he but that wasn't the point the guy was he making. He didn't even hear the guy talk. He just waited for him to stop talking. That was a, a legitimate question. That was a very legit question. You're fucking selfish at all. What else could be really going on? I mean, it's it's been years now. So what do you think? I mean, well, why don't you fucking ask me, Fez? Because I'm oh. the fucking person. All right? No one down the hall. I'm the fucking person. Ask me instead of anybody else. I don't know if I want to keep hearing bitching every fucking day. Oh. I'm going nuts with it. I started getting spaghetti against the I wall fuck fucking uh, flashbacks. I was listening to this, and I'm like, oh, no, Daddy. Daddy, please stop yelling. Stop yelling. I got a stomachache. Mm. Oh, no. Just <laughs> between the two shows, right. the issues and mental illness that runs rampant <laughs> through this fucking room is astounding. That's what makes for good radio. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> as long as you keep it to fucking gather. Oh, fucking my God. Fez, glue yourself back together. <laughs> fucking duct tape your shit back together. Yeah, Fez, you're still standing. Like, uh, you, you, Fez doesn't God. understand. Like, you just got to start. It's all up to him. Just, it's up to you, Fez. Whether, whatever that yeah, means. Yeah. If that means taking a break from radio, getting better help, I don't know. I'm, I don't live in his world. Right. so I, 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 But something's got to change. When you get the benefit of the doubt from everyone around you for years, uh, it's my, 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 you might have to turn that old viewfinder around yeah, on yourself. Because everybody yeah. likes him. Yeah. yeah. It, it, behind the scenes, we like you, Fez. We really do. It's, it's, it's not yep. being polite. This show, this show is too self-destructive to be overly <clears throat> fake polite to Fez. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we like you. and Everybody wants to see you succeed. Except for the constantly scheming Sam Roberts. Yeah, and the company in general. And, right. the, you know, but all that talk. Down the right. hall. But no, we've, everyone's rooting for the guy. In the halls, he's still a, a fun <laughs> guy, actually. I, lo I see him every day. He's fucking ple pleasant. He's very nice. Right, right. Yeah. And then, I don't know, something with his confidence when uh, he comes in here. Yeah. Uh, continue that uh, clip there, Sam.
bitching every fucking oh. day. I'm going nuts with it. I want to fucking do a show about something. You haven't jumped into one goddamn topic. I'm the person you got the fucking beef with. And you fucking I'm talk around guy. me as if I'm not. I'm not talking around you. I'm, talk I'm fucking telling oh. you I don't know what I want to do. And I've been upfront about that. And if the people down the hall want to fucking scramble to offer us each some things to do, then that should be a good thing. But I'm going fucking crazy from the craziness. It doesn't feel right with them scrambling around thinking of stuff because that was always me and you. Ugh. I... Why would I scramble around to do this with you if you're going to fucking do it with me? You're unhappy. I can't make you happy. Don't blame that on anybody what else. What an odd discussion if you wanted for two to men do to fucking be having. radio yeah. again, we would. But are you doing radio today? Are we getting into any of these topics? Or are you just bitching? See, nothing. This is where I'd look at my radio too. I, didn't pause like, it. I thought the fucking YouTube thing. No was one fucking started. <laughs> I didn't pause it. But me. Ronnie works dead air like no other person. You mention it, and then people come crawling out, the crawling out of the woodwork. They don't fucking crawling out of the woodwork to get between They're us. They're saying, "Yeah, let's look at some options." Yeah, I, I, I put one point from the outside. Yeah, yeah. Fez, I love Ron. We all like Ron. But let's be real honest. Nobody is trying to get between you guys to get close to Ron Bennington. Right. Nah, nah. We We're like all, Ron. <clears throat> everyone has their own shit to worry about. We've got our own shit to worry about. I don't, yeah. Nobody wants to be, get between <clears throat> Ron and Fitz. Nobody looks at them and goes, if only he was out of the picture, right. I could be close to Ron. We don't think of that. It uh, does sound like something more than just a professional working relationship based on Fez's end of this. I yeah. mean, you're, you're hearing things that people don't, they don't talk like that unless they're in a relationship. Thank you. You know, it's it's a uh, well, radio shows. You get really close to these fucking people. <clears throat> but hearing that, hearing yeah, like you said, yeah. the tone of that, like getting between There's us, something that different. used to right. be us, right? But it's like fast. Nobody's interfering with that. No, nobody's jumping in and going, Ron, you well, get in this room, fast. You get in that room. No one. But he's he's feeling that Ronnie has finally had it. Yeah. That's where all that's yeah. coming from. And it's a long time coming. You know, something different needs to be figured out. And then yeah. that doesn't mean Fezzi loses his gig. No. The woodwork, they don't they get fucking between us. crawling out of the woodwork. They're saying, let's look at some options. Mikey D shows up after years. Mikey uh, D has nothing uh, to do with what anything. What I told you before. <clears throat> but you're on the run of Fez show. Hi. Turn your radio down, dude. <coughs> Sorry about that, man. Uh, I know, I was just saying that, you know, with Fez's paranoia, he's creating a, a self fulfilling prophecy. So, you know, if he feels bad things are going to happen, he's creating this himself in his mind. So that we're going to learn how to change his mindset. So the more you dwell on it, the more it's just going to keep bringing it to people's attention, things that they might not have thought of. You follow what I mean? I was That's dwelling on of... it all last night. That's nothing to brag about. That's not your <laughs> fucking job to dwell on stuff. It's your job to bring up fun topics that we can all talk about. That's your fucking job. When's the last time you brought up a topic or got involved in a topic that wasn't negative and angry? What happened to the fun? It started to drive me crazy. Yeah, Roddy loves fun. And I don't know if it's a self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy if something's already been decided that I don't know about. Dude, if there was something to be decided, why would you have been fucking invited to the dinner where we all talk, <laughs> and so is Chris, because this affects Chris's Hold life. Hold on, who's Chris? 
Pepper. Uh, Pepper Hicks. Oh, okay. Chris oh, Stanley. what? what? Yeah. That guy? He's a Chris, producer for the... Chris and Stanley and Pepper and Hicks. <laughs> Jesus, that's five people. Yeah. See, crazy. but Fez knows something. must have been something. an expensive dinner. Yeah. yeah. He smells something. It's almost like you smell smoke in the room, and you uh, know you smell smoke, but he's misidentifying the source of it. Right. But the fact that he smells smoke is right. But, it is, it, but it is crazy that he thinks... People are talking about him behind his back when he's there for the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he's in denial that it's Ron who's changing. And he Ron, thinks, people, he thinks people got in Ron's ear. Right. And yeah. that's absolutely not true. That's it. He's in Ron's denial. been a fucking saint. Ron is changing. And Ron is changing. Yeah. But he thinks, being open about he, it. he thinks that can't possibly be true. There are people talking to Ron. They're talking in his ear. And even when Ron came to me and said, you know, hey, buddy, do you want to do a show? <laughs> I was like, you know what, dude? I don't, I, I don't, I'm not oh, going to be happy God, with that. Have fun with that. that. Was have fun with that. <laughs> You're terrible. <laughs> have fun with that one. Uh, I can't wait for dinner. later on today. Ron will have to tell Fez that was a joke. <laughs> well, I don't know if it was. Where's our uh, Tuesday? What do we got? The meeting in his fucking Tim's glass sarcophagus down the hall. Is that it? Or do we get steak? <laughs> no, we get, we don't get that at all. <clears throat> They're probably bringing steak and fucking make them up in the <laughs> steak. You know, smoky that room yeah. we get. <laughs> That'd but be they, great. Just tight. I bet you they made him fucking take the drapes off <laughs> his window because he would pull his slacks tight, and you'd have to like look left or right where his cock head was. <laughs> Big ball bag. Tim vibe. He's fucking shuffling some steakums in a yeah, pan. We heard your media destination. <laughs> Stop playing with yourself through your fucking pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Chad and Maryland. Um, this whole situation started last week when Ron sat in on your show. Yeah, I want to yes. say that again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron had a really good time. Was feeling good about himself. He was just sitting around throwing the ball around, fucking laughing and joking, all light and easy. And he says at one point during yesterday's show, he said, "Because, uh, because uh, of course, Fezzi was upset about uh, these guests that he apparently didn't know about that were coming in." And, right. and Ronnie's like, "I just want to talk to somebody." He goes, "I'd have my old lady, the neighbor, right, <laughs> come in just so he can talk <laughs> right. about something." Right. Uh, uh, you know, and then he has to. He goes on his show and has to feel bad about the fact that he just did our show. That's all that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He likes to do our show from time to time. Uh. Why would that happen if it was being fucking sneaky? Because I thought something was going to be said last night. It wasn't. <laughs> Drop. That's like the fork with the finger of right. God. It's not paused. No. <clears throat> no. Mm -mm. I'm going to jump out of this fucking building one day. I'm just going to go to the goddamn window and jump out of the building. It doesn't even make sense. <coughs> well. Lorenzo, you're on the run of Fez show. Uh, all right. Well, after that, I don't know what to say. But, uh, yeah, people are pretty annoying. The guys that uh, do the inspirational quotes all the time, constantly. But you got to look in, man, see the outside world. All day, every day. Yeah, well, you get those from a lot of women. There's women in my family that would like to send me that stuff. It where, is, Yeah. And sometimes I fucking change them up and <laughs> or come up with the bets and send it back to them. <laughs> Nikki, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hello? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to say, uh, I started listening maybe a couple weeks ago, and I, I, I thought Fez was the, the other guy. I didn't even <laughs> realize. I mean, Fez, does, I guess he hasn't been talking much lately. But um, So that's worth admitting. But I also want to say, Fez, you're taking a lot of bullshit, man. These guys aren't exactly respecting you. So if you do lose the job, who really gives a shit, man? Oh, just Jesus. have fun and be confident. It's not my plan to get fired. Look, Fez, this oh. guy's been listening for two weeks. He understands the dynamics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chris, by the way. <clears throat> I'm not the, I'm the you other. You get better figure out how to fucking explain yourself, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you walk around, I'll tell you this, right now, today, you look like the catcher for the show. Because you got a fucking hat on backwards, and you're not in the game. Calling signals. You know you're past 30 where you can get, even get away with that kind of shit. <laughs> Yankee fan, let's show it off. Tries to keep it a little light. Mm -hmm. Billy, yeah. Fez show. 
Hey, Ronnie, I don't even know how to follow that act that you just laid out there, but Fezzy, you should take Ronnie's advice. The guy loves you to death. It's put up a shut up, and maybe you guys take a fucking long leave and get yourself well and figure it out, because you used to be funny as well. <laughs> Fuck it. It's really getting tired of listening to it all the time, buddy. I wish you the best. There's not a fucking... The option came up that we could take a fucking sabbatical. Oh. A lot of different options came up, which is Fez is acting like negative today. And I'm telling you something. Uh, obviously, I wasn't going to come in and talk about any of them until after we're settled. But the last thing I would do when a vice president from the company says that we like you guys and we want you to feel good about yourselves. And if you need to take time off six months or whatever, I get it. You've been doing radio a long time. The last thing I would do is come back and shit on that person and disrespect them by acting like something else is being fucking held back. That sounded like he just wanted to get me out the door. <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, and I wasn't going to give in to it. Give in to what? Oh, oh, boy. Guess what, dude? This isn't about you, all right? For once, it's not a fucking about you. It's about me. Uh-huh. And that's why I didn't fucking go in there and say, I want you to fire Fez. I know you would never do that. But I don't know what other things are operating around here. God damn it. Mm. Good play. Turn it. <laughs> Charlie, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, Ron, uh, you're just wasting your breath, man. He's, he's not listening to one yeah. thing you're saying. Bravo. No, he's not. He, whatever the expression is, hearing you but not listening, whatever that stupid expression is, <laughs> he's hearing your words but he's not listening to anything you're actually wrong, saying. Dumbbell. <laughs> listening so you're just, you're just wasting your breath by even getting mad or whatever. Uh, I feel bad for you, man. Thanks. Play? Play? You know, it's, it's playing. What? It's not, it's not pause. It can't be. It's radio. Why don't you be understanding? Because you read that. Oh. Dinner last night, not even a meeting. Yeah, it was a very nice dinner. It was really a great night. Fun night. Yeah, it was really fun. I thought. How could anything negative been taken out of that? Night? <laughs> I we, thought it was a. We were basically there with what I consider the mayor of the Friars Club. <laughs> it was like showing up at a Catholic place Ooh, with the Pope. Jim, we had a bless. He's there a lot. I guess. Fuck him. I want to go. So many <laughs> cool people. I mean, it was really just a Pause. fun, fun. I, night. I mean, this is really long. I mean, yeah, and we could go on. <laughs> Dude, I, I really you get an, enough of it, it there, but now you got to go to the uh, the cookie read, and th- and then you got to go oh. to uh, where he's begging for his job. I'll Ron, find the Ron had a very show. funny, which is an hour into this, he still isn't listening to what Ron is saying, and now he's basically begging for his gig. Oh, when he's saying it should be me and you or oh, whatever. Oh gosh, where he's like just pleading, <clears throat> don't change it. Yeah, yeah. When he finally pulls the the mayonnaise, you know. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Don't you! Right. right. Yeah. If you turn up the computer, we can play the... Uh, the cookie read? The cookie read. So, they, I don't know. Then they went to break a little later on in their, in this discussion, because we're not going to play the whole thing. It's really long. Yeah. Uh, the clip is online, though. I, I tweeted late last night. Go to my Twitter or you yeah, can find yeah. whatever. When you go to Jim, <laughs> when he, oh, I'm no, sorry, I was like, we can go to JimNorton.com yeah. tours and see, <laughs> see it under there. When he brought up the uh, the blueberry thing. Right. <laughs> and he's talking about, what is it, like scripture now? Yeah, it's like a Bible, everybody. <laughs> Just what, it's just a, it's just a funny moment. Uh, we all I fucking know, bomb know. and get ourselves in yes, yes. a weird weird uh, position when yep. you do radio, and then it's exploited. <clears throat> yeah, it's hilarious. He wasn't the blueberry guy every day. <laughs> we used to do a, a, a bit called bombs and flubs, uh, where it was a million blueberry moments. Right, but he can't take that. He can't take that. Uh, the blueberry thing has become something. I don't think he likes the blueberry. So they're uh, in commercial break, and Fez's got to do a live read, and this is how it went down. What if Mrs. Fields herself offered to set up a shop in your kitchen, not to only make all the cookies and treats you could possibly imagine, but then also offered to wrap them up and carefully Let's place just them pause in for amazing... Two seconds. This is what's amazing about this, too. If somebody was acting, this would be Academy Award winning. Right. Because it starts out, you can tell he's a little upset. And as it goes on, it gradually and subtly, you could tell 
he's getting more and more upset as the read goes on right. and to the point where he's sniffing and, you know, and, and crying. And carefully place them in amazing gift packages. Then hand deliver, uh, deliver them to all your friends, family, and clients. Would you be interested? Well, of course you would. Well, MrsFields.com essentially offers this exact same service. It's uh, with a few less amazing aromas filling your house, but still, you get the point. At MrsFields.com, you oh. can shop the world's best cookies and treats, all baked to perfection, sealed fresh, and shipped directly to you or your gift recipients. Packaged in beautiful gift baskets or festive holiday tins and boxes, Mrs. Fields' gift is the perfect gift for anyone on your list. These gifts can also be personalized with a message, a logo, or even a photo. So visit MrsFields.com today and ship the world's best cookies and gifts. Enter code KITCHEN, that's code KITCHEN, at check out and save 20% off your order. Again, that's the code word kitchen and save 20% from mrsfields.com or call 1-800-COOKIES 1-800-COOKIES for more information. <laughs> he held it together fairly he, well, though. He did. <laughs> Have you ever, though, ever in your whole radio career, life listening to radio, ever heard anything like that? Aside from the Hindenburg crash DJ guy, I mean, that is, there's just something going on there that's like beyond anything I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, it's happening. It's a sad, it's a very sad cookie read. And when they came back, somebody said something about cookies. Yeah. And Ron said, uh, do you, have, you don't have right when they came back when from they that? came back, he's like talking about the cookie. And the guy goes, I'm not getting those cookies. That's very sad. <laughs> Ron <laughs> goes, nah, Miss Fields, it's a fine cookie. Fine. <laughs> You're not a fine cookie. He calls them fine cookies. Fine cookies. He's, he's cookies. trying to save the sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine cookie. <laughs> oh People are not going to forget uh, Mrs. Fields' cookies anytime soon. No, it's that... way better than just a fucking straight-ahead read. Oh, my God, is it? Oh, People are talking about those damn cookies now. Yeah. So now this is where uh, Fezzi, this is the meat of it, where he just... Begs for his gig, right? Yes. Oh, and oh. I'll, I'll be on. Well, I just play it. It was a little call. sad, even though it was I, sad it at was, first. Yeah. As a human being, it's got to be sad. But then, then I turned quickly and said, "Enough already," because you know this is going to get into Ronnie's head, and, and Ronnie needs <clears> to <throat> figure some shit out. Uh, go ahead. But I got to where I was really enjoying listening to you guys. Besides yeah. just that, what I don't know if there's a bit. I don't know if he's gone mental. It's. It's ridiculous. Listen to that commercial. I literally just wanted to smash my radio. Well, he's got to. He's, he's got to figure something out. I don't know if uh, this is the best place for him to be anymore. What happened? The video still playing. The show still playing. Oh, seriously? Yeah, yeah this. Sorry, I was just getting emotional during. The yeah, we were all aware of that, and you're emotional during the entire time. <laughs> Oof. I'm just going to throw this out there. Oh, no. <laughs> Please, Ronnie, don't change uh, anything. Oh, don't Please. Christ. I'm just asking you. <laughs> it's been a long time. and I'm just saying, Ronnie, do not do this. Don't let them do this to us. <laughs> Fez. Don't, don't do it, Ron. Fez, can I just say something to you? I literally you let him change this. Oh, I a, prefer right. angry Fez to this. <laughs> I prefer angry Fez to this. He says, "Don't oh. do it." I'm just I, I I don't know how else this to put is it going out there. Right. Don't do it. Can I just ask you to do something? Have some respect for yourself, uh. dude, and for us instead of this. <laughs> OMG. <laughs> yes, John Montone. <laughs> OMG indeed. Still fine. This is what everybody wants. Everybody Nobody wants to do it. Okay. Nobody wants any of this. Don't let them. I was only joking. <laughs> <laughs> started to touch me, he started to grab me, I told him to stop, he didn't stop, I hit him back, and then he got really angry, <laughs> he pushed me out of the car, uh -oh. 
be more funny. <laughs> now go home and get your fucking shine box. <laughs> okay, Frogget, what's next? Oh, no, Jesus that's going to be a problem. Oh, boy. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, no. <laughs> oh, it feels good to laugh. <laughs> You can act like a man! What's the matter with you? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, terrific. <coughs> That's an attention getter. <laughs> I'm scared! Oh, no. <sighs> it's, still, it's still playing. Huh? Yeah, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't pause. happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. You folks fell on your face. Uh, <laughs> you get an F minus in my book. <laughs> Don't you do it! Don't you! I got nowhere else to go! I got nowhere else to go! <laughs> I've got nothing else. <laughs> it's a person. There's a person <laughs> stranded. There's a person stranded. Oh, no. <laughs> Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off! Turn it off! <laughs> Turn it off, please. <laughs> is, is this real life? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> he can't run that one into the ground. <clears throat> What's the fucking ocean in the basket? <laughs> shut up! You shut up! You shut up! You shut up! Oh. Of all the dramatic things I've ever seen, <laughs> goodness gracious! Uh. <clears throat> Pardon my French, but you're an asshole! It's still dead air on, over there, huh? Yeah, I haven't had pause yet. I'm Jesus. a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking idiot! I'm a fucking idiot! I'm a fucking idiot! Fucking idiot! Fucking idiot! Fucking idiot! Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. my god. Damn. <laughs> mm. The attitude dictates that you don't care whether she comes, stays, lays, or prays. I mean, whatever happens, your toes are still tapping. Oh. That's funny. Makes sense. Uh. What would management say? <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> I gotta say, there's a lot of people in radio smarter than you two, but there's nobody better at doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! John, you're on the show. Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> a lot of dead air. John, don't have you, buddy. Um, <laughs> Dave, you're on the Run and Fez show. Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, you remember the Afro show, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And so me and my buddy, this was about five or six years ago, we we were both in hundred percent agreement that when it came to that show, the funniest guys were Ron, Anthony, Fez, Opie, then Pearl. Now we're in agreement that the funniest guys are Ron, Opie, Anthony, Fez, Pearl. Oh, I dropped a notch. Sorry, buddy. That's great. 
Appreciate it. <laughs> Same thing. And Pearl was never in an Afro show. I don't know who the we is. Also, with this committee, he's <laughs> committee. See, they're keeping it light and fun. Um, yeah. Now what? Well, get, is that it, or does uh, Fez come back again? Well, I honestly, oh. I feel terrible. Obviously. Uh, we have all these funny things that people wrote up on the thing about the toenail bit yesterday, but I think it would be crazy to read them off now. <clears throat> I know, they're hysterical, <laughs> but the... Yeah, then they go into their... Is that about it? Or yeah. They does Fezzi come back? I think he does. A little bit. You get the point, I guess. After that, uh, you know, kind of lost it there. Yeah. That was like almost an hour in. Yes. An hour of Ronnie basically saying that there's no shit going on down the hall. It's all him. And Ronnie's trying to figure out what he wants to do. And no one is influencing his decision. It's just all in his head. <clears throat> Fez uh, decided to completely ignore all of that. Let me ask you and right then you. have the huge breakdown. Please don't do what they want to do. If Fez started talking more and really kind of coming back a little bit and doing some bits. Uh-huh. Do you think that Ron would be so happy just to have him back doing his... Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Absolutely. He doesn't want to walk away from Fez. No, he wants no. to do the Ron and Fez show. <coughs> he exactly. wants to do the show with Fez. But yeah. Fez isn't there anymore, so... Mm. That was... Uh, but the whole, like, like uh, when, he, when he just started losing it like that. Yeah, oh, my God, sad. that's crazy. Because I do like the wow, guy a lot. Sure. And you yeah. see him in the hall, and you're right. that He's... He's comfortable. He it's like you, you feel like you're talking to a confident guy. Yeah. But you're right. Something happens when he comes on the air where it just it seems to he loses his his confidence. Yeah. It's Here like, we. Yeah, we got Steve the therapist. This idiot. Ah. Uh, hey, the Steve. Fluid in his mustache. Oh, down on the couch and he, he needs some tissues. Uh, absorbs some fluid from yeah, your eyes. Yeah. Maybe a doctor like me birthed him and stretched his head out a whole lot and then crammed it back in with a crowbar because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, it's Steve. Recording, you the attention seeking idiot. <laughs> oh. oh, you heard that? Sorry. You weren't supposed to hear that part. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Uh, good morning. This is what I think is what's going on with Fez. Uh, it's no secret he's had his behavioral health issues. Um, I believe I heard him say he's on medication. The problem is, this time of the year, with decreased sunlight, a lot of people's depression gets worse. Oh. And then there's hacks. Oh, oh, drink some orange juice <laughs> or milk, whatever the fuck. Look at the sun when it is out. Oh, Christ. Stare at it, as, yeah. as a matter of fact. Yeah. Although, although Troy does have a, a, a oh, light. Troy's got the light. He's got the happy. Yeah. You know what? I got to retweet the happy, happy light, light. Yeah. fucking video I, with Jim Norton. <clears throat> I got happy light, too. It's in my office. Like, yeah, do you? An hour. It's cool. Uh, but it's a train know? headlight. <laughs> why, why, why didn't we have this shit, you know, when we were growing up? I don't know. We went outside. We got Seasonal a little sun. Depression. How about we stop inventing shit? Well, that would be terrible. We, we, we just phones. Well, but as a, <laughs> as a as a as a human race, we just in, invent excuses for why people could be just fucking miserable and yeah. sad. Whoa. I think we develop Slam. better insight and and can diagnose things more accurately. Oh, you think oh, that's really? uh, taken from your professional? Fucking side of it. Of you know, I can't help that. it. I was diagnosed with. Mm. I have to use as an excuse. Yes, <laughs> and then they never really do what they need to Nothing. do is to get their own shit back together. And then the acronyms aren't even good enough, so they got to add a letter in front of it. Right. Like ADD used to just be ADD. Right. And now it's H T L M L K D L T D T. I get we had to diagnose some shit, but I yeah. think now we're getting into too many subcategories. Uh, You're not allowed to just be down in the dumps anymore. Right. Uh, Oh, no. What's no. the reason? Your kid can't just be an asshole. Right. right. Well, I was diagnosed with AHBD. That's difficult. What's that? Adorable, huggable boy disorder. Oh, so you're cured. Yes. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. Oh, is that fucking quick? <laughs> What Fez 
could do to Oh, <laughs> you still. <laughs> Hold on a minute, sir. I'm laughing right. at the fucking, the brilliant quick line <laughs> that Anthony just fired out as he was digging his nose with the tissue. <laughs> That's the beauty of that, is he's literally just blowing his nose and that shot out. <laughs> <laughs> I spent eight minutes trying to figure out letters, and he fucking pow. <laughs> wow, is that quick? After this caller, can we just hear the lightning uh, fucking speed of that? Uh, go ahead, sir. Yeah, the shrink is back on. The yeah, good. To, to, for Fez to feel better, all he should really do is score a pair of tickets to Jimmy's upcoming show. Oh Christ, so New York. Sir, it's not about that, oh. the 20th and 21st. But <laughs> it's not about that, please. <laughs> Summarize, Fez. Go ahead. In summary. Uh, Fez, is, Fez is wrong in total by his insecurities and anxiety. And he's, it seems to me that he's probably got a very unskilled therapist who is just, is just about keeping him in therapy with minimal progress for the bucks. I don't know about that. I, I don't think you can blame the therapist. Therapists can only do so much, as you know, sir. And I think they've changed therapists. He has. I don't know, you know, personally what's going on with his therapy uh, yeah. or anything, but obviously uh, he needs a little more help there. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel bad because I remember the old school Fez. That's the worst part of it is, you know, you remember old school Fez back at NEW in the early days, uh, Sirius and stuff like that. Uh, and, and it's like, oh, my God, that's the same guy. You go, go from such a, a extroverted, fun guy to this introverted, just like, like, and you're like, what, what the fuck could have happened there? I think that, uh, I think Fe this is my idea. Mm -hmm. I think Fez, and this I sound trite, should just uh -oh. act as if. Oh. Meaning, I know you feel like everything is fucking done mm -hmm. and finished. Come in and just <clears> act <throat> as if things are okay. And I, and it's, Sometimes that does help. Sometimes when you start just acting as if everything is okay, and I don't mean being fake. Yeah. I mean just go on the radio and understand whatever it is, fuck everything, and just talk about the topics and mm. just act as if things are okay and fuck it. We're all resolved. And you might be surprised. I had to do that once. I told you, when, when they were going to fucking fire me from K-Rock, and, and I remember the first show we, we had back. After, have, but... Yeah, they were going to fire me. I, I, when, when, when I had this, that talk with Manelli on the phone, and uh, but that had nothing to do with us. We, we never heard that. I'm not saying you. I'm saying me and Manelli talked on the phone. But I, he never brought that up with us. <clears throat> it was the people down the hall. Well, that actually was the people <laughs> down the hall. Yeah. But, but, uh, but that never was on our hmm. radar. No, you guys knew he didn't like me, but I don't think you knew. I forced his hand. Kind of like the way Fez forced Ron's hand. I forced Manelli's mm -hmm. hand. And then I remember going on the air the next day and feeling so self-conscious and humiliated and sad. Oh. But I'm like, you just got to act as if. And it was actually a really fun show. And I'm like, just act as if. Everything's cool. And wow. it was. Everything became mm. okay. And, and again, I don't mean being fake and a phony. But sometimes you got to realize that you, as it corny and trite as it is, feelings aren't facts, man. Just fucking uh -huh. realize that you might be seeing mm. it wrong. So you're saying management wants to fire Fez? <laughs> uh, K-Rock oh management God. probably does, yeah. I mean, Minnelli's blaming him. <laughs> but no, I, I think that he should, and that sounds silly, but sometimes you can't, what they say, you can't think your way into good acting, you gotta fucking act your way into good thinking. Mm. Just begin going through the motions and everything. But Fez okay. is not even gonna hear that either. So. Maybe not, but I mean, that's what I would tell no, him. It sounds very he simple. He doesn't hear any of this stuff. That's, that's the major issue here. Jimmy's advice is spot on. Uh, Jimmy's always got very insightful behavioral health. Jimmy, I love your Thank you. your advice show. You're awesome. But I, but again, I remember that just when I and I, again, I was a much different situation than Fezzi. But I, I remember the humiliation and the fucking. I felt like I was completely alone oh, on this. Man. I, I really did. I was sitting there at K Rock and going on the air. I didn't want to jump in and talk, and I didn't know oh. what to do. But again, it was a rough Fuck spot. That. But you know what I mean? Like everyone mm. hits rough spot. It's part of it. It's part of life. Yeah. It's part of any job. And you work through it, and everything's okay after that. So, Fez, this could be a fucking time Fez looks back on. In five years, Fez could go, oh, my God, what a dark fucking time that was. I was going through this medication shit and having a hard time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Whew, you know, you could do that. Yeah, that You're yeah. not out of the game, Fez. <clears throat> you're still here. Yeah. Stop acting like it's been decided, and you're, you don't have the noose around your neck. You don't. You right now might be looking up at the executioner's thing, but they have not put the noose around your neck, and neither of you. We're all talking about Fez. Yeah, but I mean, it is a, it's a but radio. That's one of the issues Ron has, because he said it. It's not about you, Fez. Yeah, that's true. 
This that is, is all coming from Ron. <clears throat> but Fez is the but one once who. Once again, we all focus on Fez. Because if Fez changed, Ron is okay moving forward with him. Right, of course. You know what I mean? Ron doesn't really. With Ron, it's like, you know, however much of the situation you can handle is the only thing you can tell. And Ron, you know, Ron is not having the same. You know, Ron's got different tools for handling this stuff. Yeah. Uh, didn't he wrap up the whole thing? It's, I didn't not, hear on that, it's not on that video, but it's on another. It's on another site where they wanted me to, you know, sign up for. Yeah, I didn't do so that. So I bailed on that. Up. It's it's in the description. Yeah, it's share beast, but don't click on half that shit is spam. You, you, you hit play now and it's spam. Like none what, of that. What is works. share beast? Those big links that say download and play right, right. now. It's you all call share now after all that plastic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> share beast. You could try it. I tried. Wisconsin, you're on the run of face show. Oh, it was that easy, yeah, huh? Man, um, <laughs> yeah. Know, Hold on, pause. Over now, but see, but it says download, play now. I clicked all those, oh, and, those and it's just that tiny little play. Oh, yeah, that's all. What an idiot I am. No, I did the same thing, dude. I did. You I did, just, right? I, I didn't click anything. I said nope, and I went. Well, away. it was clever on their <laughs> part, but then I bailed and said, you know what? I'll never use Share Beast. You they're know what? Another sneaky. Another clever sneaky thing they've been doing lately that I, I've noticed on Twitter. Uh, if you click on a link that has like, hey, here's 15 pictures of the hottest celebrities or right. something, and you're like, oh, and they got the first picture, right? And then they got a bunch of links that say next. Right. All around it right. that are big necks. Sure. So you assume that you click it to get to the next picture right. and it takes you to some fucking ad site. Oh, shit. Meanwhile, the next you need to, to click on is this tiny little next. <laughs> Dude, there's six buttons here that say download. Yes. Right. And I clicked None most of them. Of them. Yeah. And then my oh, computer bastards. started like freaking out. So I said, fuck this and I'll never mm. use Share Beast ever. It's like three card Monty. And I yes. recommend everyone out there uh, don't use Share Beast. Mm. They're fucking sneaky. Look at him. Share Beast looks evil. It is evil. Little horns on him. He's green. One eye. Go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to tell Fez that he's begging you not to do this, but he's the one that's done it. You know, it's like that dude that cheats on his chick all the time, and she finally catches him for the last time and says, I'm done, and now he's begging, don't do this, don't end this, you know? Like, well, I don't know. Just if it like means that. anything to you, I just uh, got to note that Fez is down the hall with... Uh, and I'll be joining him shortly. Oh. So, like children. <clears throat> like no. children. We can't even finish the show. Like children. Who's down the hall with Tim? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Mark, boy. you're on. I wonder how that went. Sean, in Vegas, you're on the run of Fez show. Yeah, it is kind of over now. I just wanted to say, though, I, you, Ron, you've handled it pretty well all this time. The first, the first show I ever heard was Ron, or was uh, was Fez trying to talk to his cat and get the cat to say cookie. And I, <laughs> believe it or not, kept listening from there. <clears throat> I've loved you guys. Thanks, dude. Fez is awesome. But, yeah, dude, I, 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 you know, my, my heart breaks for him because I know as much as I love Fez when he's on, it's just not healthy for him. It's just not. All right, thanks. He seemed to feel differently. <laughs> Fez felt, seemed to feel very strongly. Slight that he didn't want the change to take place. Well, Fez never been a fan of change. Um, Garth, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, Ron. Hey, no matter whether I die tomorrow or something changes the show, no matter what, dude, I just want to say thanks for everything, man. man it's been great. Right, thank you, my friend. How's I appreciate that? it. Exactly. What kind of call is that? I know which option I'm hoping for. <laughs> uh, we will be back here tomorrow. That much is for sure. Um, I believe we have Susie Espin. Stopping by, mm -hmm. and also the internationally famous Tom Rhodes. Oh, I heard Tom uh, might be getting a gig here. Oh. <laughs> oh I don't know if that's if everybody knows Chatter down the hall. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> the holes are a buzz. <laughs> yeah. Uh, coming out of the woodwork. You want to keep going? Yeah. Uh, a lot of comedians out there on the road. Very few of them play the planet Earth the way Mr. Uh, Rhodes uh, has. Um, Bob, you're on the Run of Fest show. Man, Ronnie, it's been a great ride. You just got a fantastic show. I used to listen to, I tried to, I used to listen to Florida. He was on FM. He played some crazy ass band. I'd be out there right at the edge where I the, lose the signal. What? I'm the rest area and was sitting there listening to some off the rail shit. And then it's all of a sudden he went off the air when he ended the show. And it's like these guys were so fucking whacked out, you didn't know think, when the show was I in. I think the callers are shell crazy. shocked at this point. They chase you guys that shit all the time. All right, I appreciate mm. it, dude. 
Uh, and by the way, that was a completely different show than what I do now. I, you know, every several years, I honestly believe a human being must reinvent the way that they work. And that's what I was attempting to explain to Fez. Um, I certainly feel like the, the show that he's talking about that we've always done has been like five different shows. Um, let's go over to Kevin. Kevin, you're on the Run Fez show. Hey, Ronnie, I just wanted to tell you thank you, and I'm proud that you finally stood up to that bully Fez. So congratulations. Oh, I don't know if I did that, but... Patrick, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ronnie, uh, I got XM Radio in the special package for a few reasons, and you're one of them. So, is your are you gone, or can you tell me what's happening? Are you are, is your show over? The the thing is, it's not been uh, a a hidden thing that we've been talking to Tim Sabian about doing something different. That. I sent Fez into a fucking well, test. It was a oh, oh, an ad. Oh, fuck that. That's well timed. Fuck share beast. I'm serious. You can probably get this audio. Yeah. Yeah. But I said that to Greg Allman once. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a pathetic fucking company share beast is. Uh, I didn't know where they. In the middle of an uh, audio clip that you're trying to listen to, they pop a, an ad on that you can't even click out of. Ah. Uh. It's all, you could go back to it. Iraq, what do you think? <laughs> you didn't hear me when I said it. Iraq. What'd you say? You got that, Iraq? No, I was dealing with something else. What, what were you dealing uh, with? <laughs> I have to ask. Hey, what was, what what was, was going with? on back there? We were just going over timing something with the log, that's all. <laughs> were you on your, on your back and she's squatting over you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> was he dealing with something, Sam? I don't know what he was doing. <clears throat> timing something with the log. I didn't have a clue. He wasn't listening? No, not oh, for a second. E Rock. <laughs> like, I would, in my this dumb is a mind. crazy house. It really is. <laughs> I was thinking as soon as we even started <laughs> talking about Share Beast, yeah. he would have been on there, like, oh, let me just in case find right, it in the system. Right. Share Beast stinks. But then we played it for Share Beast anyway, and then I go, <sighs> I go subtly, I'm sure we can play it out of our system. You got the clip? And we talked for minutes. Oh, he's got Oh, no. I don't have the clip that he oh. has there. No. <laughs> Why? The log. You just went to that. I didn't have time to go through the whole I, thing. I have your other clip ready to go. You don't have time. It was just at the end of the show. It was a quick wrap Wait, up. So which you, other, go to, you go to the end of the round. The other clip show. I did ask for. Yeah, I have that sitting here waiting to go. Right. Okay, oh, how about, we can hold that one, but how yeah. about the one Sam is doing? Right. I'd have to dump, cut out of this one because this one isn't saved. Well, just save it. <laughs> Do this. <laughs> Take the two seconds. But a beep, but a boop, he wants to talk. Depending on what year. <laughs> He's working on logs. All right, go back to this share beast and hopefully they don't <laughs> give us another pop up. Horrible, <laughs> horrible fucking sight. <laughs> Not to blame Fez because it's my own responsibility, as I just feel like I've been worn down. <clears throat> and I purposely people brought up about when I went in to do O and A. I really want to just see if I could play fucking ball on that level still. You know what I mean? That I, that I could walk Jesus. in with a fast team and MVP. be able to fucking play. And that was really, really fun. Yeah, fucking MVP. What is he talking about if he could still play um, on that level? But it doesn't mean anybody hates anybody or doesn't like anybody. Well. All right, Millie Hatchett just wrote, Please don't break up with us. I'm almost sobbing at my desk. Oh, Jesus. A hold of yourself. Didn't Millie just win the other day? Yes, she did. Nice. Millie Hatchet. <clears throat> She's got some Jimmy Webb sign going towards her. Sounds like somebody's going out on winner. <laughs> <laughs> some good laughter. <laughs> Millie Hatchet's always been great. Yeah. I go back to the like, D.C. with her. It's wild. <laughs> Toenail winner is just... Um, the wind. Jack, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, remember at the end of the, I'm sure you do, the end of The Godfather when uh, Tessio knows his gig is over and huh. everybody backs away from him. Tom Hayden says, no, I can't help you this time. I think it was just the opposite. I think it was like watching the brother-in-law kick the fucking window out on his way. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, yeah that, that, that was a move, but it was like the, the, that dude knew it was over. 
and yet he had an enormous amount of self-respect and just kind of shrugged his shoulders, and that was that. Yeah, Tessio did it the right way. Tez went out like the fucking brother-in-law with the kicking out the windshield. Um, <laughs> That's brilliant. Know, Tulsa, you're on the Manifest Show. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, I've been listening to you guys for 12 years, called in a few times, always positive. This has by far been the best day of radio. As no, fuck as that has guy. Been, to hear you finally, well, not finally, I know you've been doing it for a while, but just to, to really state your, your opinions in concrete, and it's just, I want to thank you for everything, man. All right, Alan, let me say this, though. And I know I got to go in just a second. Yeah. But if that was true, then why does it feel so fucking Good. awful? Oops. That everyone's saying, awful. oh, somehow just stating the truth is better. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you from experience that nothing feels that fucking bad. My uh, humble opinion, Um, because he was manipulated by Fez. That's why it feels so fucking bad. Hmm. Just my opinion. You think? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Fez got into his head. That's what those people do. with Their craziness. I am... um... Ronnie, you, you should stay strong. I don't know if he wants to hear my two cents, but stay strong. You know what you got in your head and what you need to do. And I know you're not a bad guy. And I know you got Fez's back, but fucking stay strong. That is that is my advice today. You know exactly what you want to do. So do it. Uh-oh. But you got to stay strong. This is going to fan the flames. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I really don't give a fuck. <clears throat> I dealt with this my entire life. Because then all these fucking crazy people get it into your head, and then you're like, okay, I guess I could deal with this a little longer. All right. When you know in your heart what needs to be done. And then and to Fezzi, Ronnie still has your back, even though he's going through major fucking changes in his head. God. Play. I'm going to be back in here tomorrow. Susie Espin will be a guest. Tom Rhodes will be a guest. Um, the initial thing was that we were going to get something together and I, I got to go down and figure out what's going on with, um, Fez right now. Let's see, you know, we were going to do this a little more. <clears throat> Is that it? Maturely a oh. little more like adults. We will be back here tomorrow though. That's a promise. And we'll see you then. And that's the end of my show. Donk. Oh. Well, he has uh, to go down the hall and deal with Fez, even though this is all Ronnie <clears throat> and what's going on in Ronnie's head. I go down there with Tim Sabian. Right. Have a little chit chat with the three of them, I'm sure. Uh, that was comfy. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure today's show, when uh, the comedian friend uh, comes on. I don't think anybody will be listening to that show. Being today. comfy. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> you think at this point, Tim's like, what the fuck did I get myself into? Uh, he's got <laughs> he's got two miserable shows that don't believe in this place anymore. <laughs> Have fun. Have fun, Tim. Trying to figure this out and remotivating everybody. You got them spicy steaks though. Because this place fucking kicked us down, down, down. Yeah, Tim, how about you take the crew here out for a fucking a pepper laden shitty steak? Yes. I'd love a nice spicy steak with my pal Tim. Oh. I like Tim. Yes. His giant head, I miss him. <laughs> take me out for a steak, Tim. I'll fucking jerk you off. <laughs> I know what the present was, by the way. <laughs> Fez gave uh, Ronnie a Christmas present. I wish you found that part of the tape. Eric? You got that, Eric, maybe? No. <laughs> <laughs> he states matter-of-factly. I, I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Ronnie said that the present is so... The, I guess the present made him <laughs> so uncomfortable that he doesn't want to tell anybody. Although he brought it up on the radio, so I think eventually... What happens with radio shows, and most of you people are pretty knowledgeable now, if it's brought up on the radio, eventually it gets out there. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. you can't do it right away for whatever reason, but I think eventually Ron will tell his audience uh, what Fez gave him for Christmas. A what Christmas fe- present Christmas on present. December or what? It would have been like second or third? Yeah. yeah. So it's a weird time to give a Christmas present. I think it's a promise ring. Oh, my God. I think it's a promise ring. Do you think it would be something as personal as, yeah, as I think, a ring? I think Fezzi gave Ronnie a promise ring. Oh, man.
Or or remember that douchey, that half fucking necklace. Maybe they got they both oh, got a where, half where necklace. He wears half. Best friends with a heart. And yeah. Ronnie yeah, wears that. half. Yeah. Oh, that would be nice. Would you guys wear them if I got you that? Hey, <laughs> 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 wonderful. Uh, I'd put my half on a homeless guy. <laughs> there, you're connected. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we should break. It's been a while. We're going to start our show next. Nice. Can we hear Anthony's lightning fast oh, line? No. Sure. You want to do it now? <laughs> it, it's, it's so fast. Do it into break. Oh, Eric, and do it uh, and do it well. Well, I was diagnosed with AHBD. That's difficult. What's that? Adorable huggable boy disorder. Oh, so you're cured. Yes. The Opie and Anthony Show. All right, well, that sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony Show five days a week, live on satellite radio, online, on your phone or tablet, or even on demand, go to SiriusXM.com. Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony Show on Twitter, at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton.